Okay, hello everyone. Um, today I'm going to review the book Furman by Sam Savage. Okay, this is kind of an obscure book. Uh, I'm a big fan of just obscure things. Sometimes I'll go to the library and I'll go up to the new book section if I can't find something I really want to read. And I'll just browse through these unknown books to me and I'll check out the cover, read the blurb and I'll just pick up something that's completely odd and off the wall and not usually what I would read, you know, and this is one of those books. They say that, you know, you can't judge a book by its cover, and I agree with that, but I think that the uh, overall presentation of the book can influence you to want to read it, you know, if it's visually appealing, and this one's no exception to that rule because I mean check it out it's got a big bite mark out of it that's kind of neat it's got the rat on the cover at first glimpse this looks like a children's book but it's not the subject material or subject matter is just really mature you know I wouldn't want a little kid to read this you know it's even though like I said it looks like a kid's book there's a you know it's illustrated in spots there's a good picture right there <laughs> See, just looking at it, you know, first impression might be, wow, this is a kid's book. But no, it's really not. It's actually a very mature book. Uh, what it's about is it's about a little rat named Furman. And Furman loves to read. And the best way I can describe this book is it's kind of like the movie Ratatouille. You know, Ratatouille was about the little rat who was obsessed with cooking. And he kind of developed a sort of humanity in his quest to become a great chef. This is very much like that. Uh, Furman's a rat, and he loves to read, and he kind of develops the same sort of human mentality in his quest for learning how to read. And Along the way, he has an identity crisis because who he is in terms of a rat isn't what rat society is expecting. You know, he doesn't quite fit in with the other rats. He doesn't really like the other rats. He wants to be human, but he's not. In fact, there's a particularly interesting passage. Let's see if I can find it here. Uh, probably not. Well, anyway, oh, there it is. <laughs> see, as you can see right there, it's a picture of him, of him as a rat staring in the mirror. And what he says is that, in the end, seeing myself for the first time, was not at all like seeing just any old rat. The experience was more personal and more painful too. So what he says is that he's almost ashamed of being a rat. You know, and this is a uh, example of a really ugly term I learned in, when I was an undergrad called a Bill Dung's a Robin. I don't know, it's a really ugly, horrible looking term. I wish they would have called it something nicer. But uh, what, it mean, what it means is it's a story of development, you know, and, then, and throughout the story you can really see Furman grow up, you can see his mentality, he kind of has a midlife crisis at a point, because you have to keep in mind all of this occurred over the course of like a year or two, well, you know, rats don't live very long, you know, and his struggle to come to terms with his own mortality is really reflected in the lives of the people around him. Uh, he calls people his lovelies. He's just so enamored with people that, you know, he's he calls them his lovelies. You know, he's just wow, they're so great. And he has various relationships. One who he admires, who he learns heartache from because, you know, the guy tries to kill him. And then another guy who takes him in as a pet. So, you know, he really sees the good and the bad in humanity, you know. And the neighborhood that they live in is being condemned. So it's almost like his struggle to find, to come to terms with his mentality is reflected by the decaying of the neighborhood and the fact that the people he uh, deals with are usually older people. You know. uh, really, I don't have too much more to say about it. This is, like I said, it's a wonderful book. I was greatly impressed by it kind of surprised too because you know I was expecting this charming kid story and lo and behold I find this very deep intellectual yet kind of you know light-hearted book uh, 
yeah, if I had to rate this, I would give it a 5 out of 5. This was awesome. I love this book. So, if you ever get a chance to, go ahead and read it. There's actually several editions of this. They don't have the bite mark in it. and I guess it's still cool, but I think that's part of the appeal of it is, you know, turn to pages and you got these, like, little bite marks. Because one of the jokes he has is that throughout his whole life, one of his biggest struggles has been trying to not eat the books he's reading. That's why there's the bite mark on it. You know? So, uh, yeah. So check it out. I greatly encourage everybody to read this. It's insanely cool. And, um, yeah. That's about it. <laughs> cool.